just a couple of examples of what students and teachers have created. Um, so this map here is one that was created by a student of mine who was looking at famous physicists. And you'll see his story map is pretty simple. It's famous physicists, the physicists, a few physicist organizations, and then how close they were to each other. And so if we click on the home, it lands right here. We go to the next map, and he shows you a map with some points that were created the same way we showed you in webinar one how to add points to the map. And then he said, click on a name to see information. And what he did was he activated this text to follow the map. So you might say, hey, I want to know about Albert Einstein. You click on it, and a map note comes up of Albert Einstein. If you click on Albert Einstein's face, it takes you out to the image. If you want to find out, if you click on his name, it takes you out to a website on his name. So he, he's added a little bit of, of, of mojo to it. If you want to know about Galileo Galilei, check his name and it shows where Galileo Galilei lived. You click on his name and it takes you out to his website. Click on his picture and it will take him out to his picture. Continue to move down and he shows you a few of the organizations that are dedicated to physics today. And similarly, you click on the words and the information about them pop up where they're located. And then he decided to do a little bit of analysis with it, and he wanted to show a density map of where you would find the, uh, the physicists. And uh, this student definitely got, a, got an A on his project. It took him about a week to work on it. So that's a, to show you the story map that you're creating. Here's how he modified the setup and used a lot of different base maps. He used grayscale very well, and he changed the background to a side panel to not be white, but be black with white text. And it really gives it a contemporary, contemporary look. Um, another map that, that's been used, is, or another one that was made, was called Coffee Houses, Crucibles of Revolution. This was designed by a middle school teacher who created a wiki site over here to accompany the story map. So she put uploaded all of her stuff into the wiki site. She then interacted with the wiki site on the map. And she created a story map that's also a web quest for her students to learn about the role of coffee houses as part of the revolution and looking at the American Revolution from the point of view of London, England and what role London, England played in the revolution. And as you work through, you can see it's the same template you'll be working with. She has students read a quote about the uh, coffee houses, and then she's like, if you'd like to see more images, click here, and notice it takes you through to the wiki site to look at more primary sources. So you can have a lot of interactivity and bring spatial reasoning into your, your regular classroom with this. So these are two examples. One is, the, again, the student example of doing a report on fa famous physicists, and a teacher creating a web quest using the same, same tool. And to conclude tonight, just to show you the resources you have available to you. Um, in the Longwood course, under the Assignments page for Next Stop Story Maps, you'll see there's a link to the instructions Julie shared with you tonight. There's a link to a Story Map Teacher's Guide that walks through the steps of the pieces that Andy shared with you. There's also a tutorial on how to access online images for story maps. And then we've also created an editable map graph, editable story map graphic organizer so that if you or your students want to dump all of your information ahead of time into a Word doc, you can. And so when you open this up, you'll see that here are all the pieces you're going to need for your map. You can type in your section title, describe what's going on, type in the text that you want for the side content. You can make notes of what you want in the main stage, and then if you have links for multimedia, you can. And this is a Word document, so you can add as many sections as you'd like. And so that's a resource for you or your classroom when you decide to take this live and on the road with your students. And this is what the teacher guide looks like with the uh, project preparation and the things that you should do ahead of time. Consider the images, 
Consider the primary sources and secondary readings. Consider how you might use class lectures or lecture, lesson activities with your students. And go ahead and check and see if you have, are there are any ArcGIS Online layers that are available to you. And uh, set it up for your students or yourself. And then work your way through. And then here are the procedures that uh, Andy shared with you earlier. Um, once you go through the assignment sheet, if you go to the next slide, Here's where the videos that were created are available to you to help you uh, walk through things. So how to get started, how to create a title page. Each one of these lasts about three to four minutes. How to add and set, set your map, and then how to add further customization. And then finally, we want to let you know that during the next week and a half, we have a discussion thread um, that is really we're calling it a cafe. And the goal is that you have a place to go with your questions. And the thoughts are is that questions you have could be answered by Andy, Julia, or myself, or by your colleagues. If you have lingering questions, post them in here. We'll probably be checking them once a day, and we want, might not get back to you immediately. But over the next 24 to 36 hours after you post your question, we'll respond to you. And if we see common questions or themes, we might even blast them out to everybody and say, hey, what thoughts do you have for this teacher? She's looking or he's looking for that home run primary source to put into the document. What comes to mind for you? Um, so we thank you for sticking around a little longer than uh, 7.30. At this moment, we're going to open it up for comments from Julie and Andy. Uh, Julie and Andy, do you have any further comments about tips and tricks for tackling a, a map journal story map? And then after that, we'll open it up for uh, any questions? I think you pretty much covered a good amount of it. I don't really have anything right now. I think that um, just to kind of reiterate what Andy said earlier, um, do kind of think about the scope of kind of the purpose of your map and, and think about the scope of it. It doesn't have to be a massively large map, and a lot of the the, the shorter ones I found have had a, a lot of impact with my students. So really think about something that that you would be that would be really useful to you um, in terms of putting that that geospatial perspective on one of your lessons or one of your activities. Maybe even thinking about you know is there is there a lecture that you have that's kind of that standard PowerPoint? How could you maybe um, transform that um, into the story map? So, um, and, and again, after you've gone through all of the tutorials and such, please feel free to contact us with any uh, questions or concerns. Actually, I will add, make sure you save your work often. Uh, it's not, like I think I even said it in the, in the videos, but it's not Google, it's not auto-saved, and I can't tell you the number of students I have that have lost projects. So I would say after every time you add a slide, go ahead and click that save button. It doesn't slow you down a whole lot. And while we're sharing tips and tricks and lessons learned, um, I will recommend that you build your maps ahead of time. Put your map notes in uh, before you go to the Story Map app. The map app, the Story Map app does respond to edits to your map. Often though, once you add new map notes, it will reset the content to your map. So as you work your way through a section, and let's say you've added two or three new map notes because you realize you want them, you may have to go in and turn them off again. And it's not it's not a big deal, but it, it does take a little bit of time. I was I was noticing that today as I was I was creating the the, the links to the the different uh, events of the Civil War that I was like, oh, I want to add that, and once I added it, I had to go back in and turn it off on all the sections because it because ArcMap doesn't know that you wanted it off. They thought as you added it. Because you added it, you wanted it on all the sections. So just build your maps first, and then go to your app, or, or tinker with it. And uh, as I said earlier, keep your knees bent, and realize you will probably hit a few hiccups along the way. But once you get through this, you, ha well, you will have a great resource for your, your teaching, and uh, you might be ready to have your students begin to create their own simple story maps. Hey, Chris, I'm going to jump in and answer. Elizabeth's question. Okay. Uh, y yes, you can, Elizabeth. You can change your main map. Um, it's just a matter of 
when you click on map, just selecting the map through your My Content. It, like I said, it goes to the default map from wherever you launched your story map, but as long as you just click on that little drop down, it should allow you to pick whatever map you have within your content. Also, just another thing, I don't, I, may, I don't think I mentioned it, but you can change the order of your slides. The only one you cannot change is your home screen, so kind of make your home screen good. You can go back and edit anything on there, but you you know, once you make that your home screen, your, your, or your kind of your anchor page, everything else goes from there. The other subsequent map pages or story map pages, you can rotate those and manipulate their order, but that first one is kind of a locked screen. Um, to, to piggyback on that, Andy, uh, with regards to changing your base map, as Andy was describing, the other key thing is you can to remember is that you can make multiple maps. You're not captive to one home run map for all of your story. You might have ten different maps and each time you go to a section you just change the map that you're pointing to. So that that is a way to easily change the base map that you're pointing to. Just create a separate map so that you don't disrupt what you originally had. Um, so I think that's the workaround and Andy you presented that earlier on. Um, Mary, you asked, can I share you other examples? I'll be happy to once we stop the webinar. I'll be honest, I have some maps that students have made that they're not ready for the, they violated a lot of copyright laws, so I don't want to bring those up right now. But once we stop recording, I will show you a number of different examples if you'd like. So any other thoughts, Andy or Julie? Not right now for so. me. Okay, I'm going to stop recording now and we'll open the floor up for any questions you might have. Um, good question, uh, Elizabeth, about the format for the bibliography. We are going to go with MLA. Unless you have serious reservations, you are more than welcome to use APA.